Reading a magazine on a tablet is nowadays one of the most common ways to do so, and topping this trend is one of the most prestigious companies, Forbes magazine. Welcome to the Social Network Show. On today's special series of one-on-one -on -one interviews straight from the New Media Expo, Dr. Nat sits down with Bruce Upton. Mr. Upton is the managing editor of the prestigious Forbes magazine. He oversees the wealth and data platforms, including the Forbes 400, the world's billionaires, and the global 2,000 leading companies. Among other things, Dr. Natalie discusses the topic of consumers who want to preserve their pseudonymity to get better offers by giving up some of their privacy. Take it away, Dr. Nat. And so I'm here with Bruce Uppen, and I wanted to talk to him about this article that he just wrote about pseudonymity and anonymity. And so when I read it, it really struck me. Looking at consumers who are trying to preserve their you know, privacy and maybe give up some so they can get better deals, mm -hmm. and social technology companies who are really relying on the data. So I'd like to understand a little bit more about your point of view on that. Okay. So, uh, I mean, in, in the social media world, there's a, a spectrum from totally anonymous, uh, which has its benefits and virtues in, in, in uh, enabling free expression without fear of retribution, all the way to real, the real name movement, if you will, which Facebook uh, has certainly championed. Um, and, and, and I think the, using real names and what people who are so passionate about it believe that it's the path to a global community where people can make true, authentic connections and can speak with, uh, be polite, um, uh, and be authentic, which is a key attribute in social. Um, but if you look at the networks that are, that are truly uh, insistent on, on using your real name and, and actively police fake, fake identities and, and accounts, it's because they have a, a focus on the bottom line and want to sell those names. And the behaviors uh, attributed to those names to advertisers like, like Facebook. Well, what's interesting about Amazon and the whole idea around brand advocates and advocacy was they, a lot of people don't know this, is when they were first starting out, and you probably know this, what they did was they went back and asked certain customers who kept giving them feedback, which was always interesting. I used to work in call centers a lot, and so the customers would be giving feedback to the company, but they weren't interested in, they just saw those people as complaining versus that could be gold. And one of the smart things that Amazon did was they took those people and they created affinity groups and really exploited the ability to take that feedback and integrate it. So when I talk to CEOs and they say, Dr. Knapp, this social media stuff, don't tell anybody, I really don't get it. And I say, well, do you want to increase revenue? Do you want to decrease mm -hmm. costs? And they're like, yeah, okay, tell me more. So I kind of think that it's what we've all wanted corporate life to look like, to be authentic and direct and to have the voice of the consumer or customer reflected. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, the best companies do listen more than they speak and observe more than they listen. Um, you, you don't want to, the, the best companies do, like Intuit, for example, which I wrote about back in April, they, they move by, by moving all, especially in, nowadays when, when you can, in the software industry, when you can be a cloud company now, all of your customer interaction is now instrumented. Every ounce, every pixel of your website and every email that can be uh, analyzed for what people click on, what they don't click on, uh, how long they stay once they click on certain areas. We do it on our, our news site all the time. Um, so you can be making changes all the time and testing things all the time without really list, without actually having a focus group or doing the traditional means of customer listening and, ex and experience. Uh, it's just it's, it's 24 hours a day. Um, social is a little bit harder because uh, you have to, I mean, you have to understand where people are coming from a little more. It's not really behavior. You need to then, there are plenty of companies do this where they, they have someone watching all the feeds and then you begin to get, engage with some people and actually get them to tell the story of what actually happened here. Can we figure this out together? Um, the best companies do that really well. I mean, Dana White, who we're going to hear from tomorrow, he's actually had, he's actually, he's seen tweets from fans that have, had a bad seat at a fight, at, you know, a, a mixed martial arts fight. They were sitting behind the video booth, and they and so he and they sent a picture. They tweeted a picture of, "Look at my crappy seats." Right. And so he had them moved, right within ten minutes. 
See, and what great PR is that? Yeah. So we hit, we're going to use it tomorrow on stage as more PR. But th that's real response time. You don't see many CEOs even on Twitter. And what do you think makes a really good columnist? Uh, I think it's a spell. <laughs> good grammar. Details, yeah. Original ideas. Yeah. Uh, get rid of the rhetorical questions. Don't just look at your navel. Um, a lot of people just, just start typing, and they, the, the, the blog posts just kind of spool off into meaningless, um, you know, prognostication. I think you need to pick up the phone and call before you post. Um, unless you're writing about something you know about that's, that happened to you personally, some of our best posts have been business stories that were born out of personal experience. Like I walked into a Best Buy and here's what I saw. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to tell people don't, don't feel the need to write something every day if you don't have something to say. And so in, what would you like to leave us in terms of wisdom? Like you're here at the show, we're seeing a lot of new technology, we're, we're going to get to hear you speak and a lot of other thought leaders. What do you think is the most important thing that people should pay attention to? Wow, um, I would think the the quality of their thought their, their thoughts. Um, I would I tell people to read to read out loud what they what they what they write. That's a great idea. Uh, even backwards, um, because nothing will destroy your credibility more than um, a, a lazy sentence, missing words, bad spelling. That's just the copy editor in me. But uh, I would encourage people to to think a lot more before they write, um, and write a lot more before they publish and publish a lot more before they start talking to the world about it. Amazing wisdom. Thank you, Bruce, very much. Sure. Thank you. Wise indeed, Dr. Natalie. This is it for now, but next week's show, Dr. Natalie discusses inventing the future. Is this really possible? We'll tell you all about a new interactive show that is the lifeline between scientists and people just like us. We'll explain in next week's show. See you then.